It's remarkable, really, because they are the so-called richest club in the world, but they, like every club in Europe, are constrained by financial fair play constraints, and that is affecting every big club at, at the moment. And Darren Eels, uh, chief executive, was speaking yesterday and said they are compliant with FFP, they will remain compliant with FFP as well, and they don't see January as a window whereby they're going to make knee-jerk reactions. They don't see it as a window where you can get much value. And we know that historically. January is not the best window to do the bulk of your business anyway. But they're... I'll write off the shows, James. There's still plenty no, they, we still got, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely tune in because there's going to be plenty happening. Yeah, there's going to be loads of I'd say it's not the best value you can get in this window. But I think uh, when you look at the squad, though, I mean, the fact is they've got 11 players out unavailable at the moment. And that's the real concern. That's why he would usually, in this instance, go into the market. But it shows Newcastle, an upbelly mobile club who want to be a sustainable top six club because of the constraints. They can't just pump loads of money and they need to do it in a sustainable way. Eventually, they'll get there. Flex, you've done a lot of research on how it's going to work in terms of revenue coming in. And commercially, if they can boost those deals, they can stay in the Champions League. Again, if they can have an academy where they can sell players like Chelsea have, if they could sell a Mason Mount for £60 million and get pure profit on that, then it does mean they could sign more players. But it's, it's a difficult situation they're in at the moment. You feel for Eddie Howe because up next, they've got Man City. Yeah, you do feel for Eddie Howe, especially watching that as well. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, you can tell he's frustrated and they've been really unlucky. As have a lot of teams, but in particularly Newcastle as well, with the injuries that they've had. And they've had to compete at a really high level, you know, play high level games against PSG, Dortmund back to back, Manchester United, um, Arsenal, Chelsea, you know, big, big games. And they've actually come out on top of a lot of them, considering they've been absolutely run into the ground and decimated with injuries. Um, but like I said earlier, and we've been talking about it, it isn't all bad um, for Newcastle. And, and, and Darren Hills is basically just highlighting just some the distance that they have to travel in order to make themselves, like you said, a sustainable top six side. It isn't easy. We've seen teams in the past sort of threaten to break into that top five, top six, top four, and maybe, you know, Leicester were doing it, knocking on the door for a little while, and then, you know, look where they are now. We've seen Brighton sort of knocking on the door, can't quite stay there. It's very difficult to do it, and Newcastle, with the riches that they have now and the, the resources and investment that they have, can do it financially, but they've also got to do it by applying to the rules because what they don't want to do is derail themselves and, and Darren Hill spoke about you know Everton getting a fine and I quote he said that um, we know that FFP has teeth to it you know it, it can come and bite us and, and we, we need to make sure we don't do that um, but things are looking forward you know the seller deal that they've got for the front of shirt sponsor they're back with Adidas now they're going to receive a large amount for that as a kit manufacturer the Champions League money is going to come in from, from this <coughs> season. Um, and also it shows the knock-on effect of how important it is for them to try and get in the Champions League again this season or back-to-back -back or consistent Champions Leagues because it's, you know, the teams above them who are getting huge, huge money. I mean, Spurs, if they're looking to try and catch Spurs, 444 million was Spurs' revenue. And they haven't, done, they haven't put out their new forecast yet. And Newcastle at 250, so still some way behind. And that's with Newcastle in the ascendancy. So he's just given a sort of measuring stick of, of how hard it is to catch up um, with the so-called big six. So um, I think it's a test in time, but hopefully with the, the, the fixtures easing on Eddie Howe, hopefully that'll be a lot easier for them. I mean, the Champions League revenue will, will help to even just having one season of Champions League helps you off the pitch, but almost felt like on the pitch, they almost qualify for the Champions League too early because you could argue with the way it went that they weren't quite ready for it and a, a more natural development They're ahead for them. Of schedule. Yeah, yeah, it would have been to get the Conference League or, or the Europa League, but they kind of skipped all that. <laughs> got, to, got to the Champions <laughs> League, which was, which was fantastic. Eddie Howe and the players deserve so, so much credit. But Eddie Howe is almost like now a, a victim of his own success because you see where they're sitting in the Premier League now and you think, they finished fourth last season, but they've been decimated by injuries. And the Newcastle fans are a, a realistic bunch. I don't think Eddie Howe should be in trouble or would any Newcastle fan be, be calling for, for his head. But they're going through a difficult time at the moment and then wanting to add players in January. They, they simply can't do it. And you could see that Eddie Howe's visibly frustrated by it. He understands it, but he's visibly frustrated by it. So it's a really interesting time for him. But he literally said that when he was asked about Dominic. Dominic Solanke said it is a frustrating story. He said, look, I've signed him previously. I know all about the player, but I don't actually have the ability to bring in a player of that quality. Yeah, look, we know the Newcastle owners would love to back Eddie Howe, give him what he wants, give, give him these players, but they, they simply can't do it. And this is kind of new grounds for, for clubs because takeovers have happened previously in the Premier League and in, and in other leagues and owners have been able to go mad and buy bringing players that they want from, from all over the world but Newcastle simply haven't been able to do that all the way through this process they've been looking at finan financial fair play and 
they spent they have spent an, an awful lot of money over the years. Do- Doogie, who does the, does the football show, did a great tweet earlier on talking about you know how the wiggle room just isn't there for Newcastle at all. They've spent so much money and now that they're paying the price for that, they almost need to qualify for the Champions League again to keep that income coming. But because of the way their season's gone through through no fault of their own, really, with the injuries, I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Yeah.